Okay, Ron, wait for Anne Marie to give you the signal. <laughs> okay, you can start. Well, I uh, said a short prayer that I can synthesize everything I need to say in such a short time, and mm -hmm. God will multiply that uh, the information in your minds and in your hearts so that you can digest it later. Uh, I was asked to um, um, comment or reiterate in, in, in the book here, Whom Shall I set, uh, Send? Um, Discerning the Will of God, Chapter 16, Growing in Maturity by Frank S. Uh, Salami. Um, I'm not sure if he's Italian or what, but uh, if he is, I pronounced it wrong and I apologize. Um, chapter 16, discerning, the, I mean, uh, growing in maturity. Th this is all a reference to Crisio, the, this book. And, and growing in maturity is a, is a pretty accurate title for this chapter. You know, the chapter refers to uh, us as individuals. And, and he, he uses the phrase, the principle of the life and and it states that things are either growing or dying. You're either moving forward or you're stagnant. And his topic sentence in, in, in the book here refers to a, a, a phrase we hear a lot in Crisio uh, literature. It's a, a common mantra through, throughout uh, all of Crisio. It, it's a progressive conversion, not only for those Cursiestas, but for those people that we are bringing to Christ. Uh, a common belief that a lot of spiritual writers have is that when we become um, religiously fixated, and that's another term that he used for stagnant, our relationship with God breaks down because we have some assumptions. We have some assumptions about what we know and who we are. And, and we, one of them is that we assume that we have gotten to a point where we're mature enough to understand exactly in the fullness of God, which is a sin, but we, we get to a point sometimes like that. Uh, you know, I know everything I need to know, therefore I don't need to continue. The other assumption is that we are afraid. And that fear is something that is, is not from God. The fear of not being accepted. You know, this goes right hand in hand with Deacon, what Deacon was saying. You know, part of evangelization is I don't want to offend anybody. So therefore I won't. Uh, I'm, you know, we're afraid to admit that we need some guidance. Or, or lastly, we don't really like who we are, who we're becoming. And that, that is another uh, block in, in our progress. Um, in Crisio, we have you know, the three directives in pre Crisio. As the deacon senate is in the book here, is that we're asked to um, be a friend. You know, make a friend, be a friend. And, and to be, not just bring somebody to Christ, but to be a mentor. Yeah, you know, that, that's so critical. Uh, yeah, I can be your friend, you know, I'll bring you to Christ. But as a mentor, we take him to the fourth day. And if we're living in Christ, that, that is our mantra. You know, one of the readings associated with the chapter here is Romans 15, 1 through 6. And, and I'm not going to read it. I have some notes here. And, and primarily that reading is about that we have an, an obligation to be of service to others and to bear each other's burdens in life. Uh, just as Christ's uh, example to us, Christ's spirit of service throughout the whole gospel, uh, bearing witness to Christ's life in living our Christian faith, we should be led to Christ and we should be leading others to Christ as children of God. You know, the tools to help us with this um, phrase, progressive conversion, we have in Crisio. 
you know, group reunion. That that is extremely critical, in my opinion. In the book, he he emphasizes on it. But group reunion that eliminates one of the fear uh, fears that people may have that brings stagnation is that you, you know I, I just keep committing this sin, or I just can't get over this hurdle, or I have this problem uh, with my family, or I have this problem with myself. In group reunion, we all know this. It, it, it's it's meeting with friends, and we are friends. So we kind of mentor each other. Um, you know, if you really are a friend and if you really want to be a friend, you're going to tell what? The truth. You're, you're not going to let somebody slip through um, the day and they leave still being shackled where they are at. You know, we want to help that individual. And that's an extremely important part of Crisio. But even more importantly, we have the Altreus. And that brings something really unique uh, to a movement. It brings a group of like-minded people who are sharing. And they're in community with that. And even more so, the Grand Altrea, we, we emphasize the group reunion and the Altrea, but we have a key component that is there. And that is what we're all about. Christ, we have the sacrifice of the mass and we celebrate that as, as a group that comes together with Christ, in Christ. Now we have the school leaders and, and the school leaders is a place of formation where we grow as a community with Christ and we're on that same mission and that mission is to live our lives in Christ and to bring Christ together and to help the church do that. Um, bear with, uh, okay. We, um, have a tendency, though, to do uh, a couple of things, not everyone, but we go back to our comfort level, and of the three legs in the three-legged stool, we start um, to concentrate on two legs, and that would be maybe study and prayer, while we avoid or dismiss the opportunities of evangelizing. Now, Deacon has covered some reasons why and some things that we need to overcome, but evangelizing is what we really need to start doing now. Uh, Father Frank uses the analogy in this book of uh, Olympic athletes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm friends with some Olympic athletes that have won gold medals. Um, one of them was from a communist country she had no choice. She was taken away from her parents. And, and she was told uh, a story about who she was. And something had happened to her. She was given this vision, which Father Frank talks about in the chapter. She had a vision of where she was going to end up in, as an Olympian. The other person is from America. And he grew up um, in, in a loving house he and his brothers were very competitive and one of the things that they taught each other to do was to walk on their hands so they would go on walks around the, the block on their hands not on their feet on their hands they would come down the stairs on their hands so they became very good at gymnastics and one of the brothers decided he wanted to be an olympic athlete and and, and the point is made in here olympic athletes have two very distinct things going for them. They have this vision of who and what they want to be and they're goal oriented. A goal in the sense of not action items, but goal is I want to win the gold. You know, Father makes a, a very good point here. Um, Father suggests that 
as we're listening to the Holy Spirit, we, we are directed uh, to go here and there and creating some sort of chaos in our lives or some disorder from time to time. The reason why is it, it may look like what, we're, what we think is good and what we're doing, it becomes helter-skelter. And, and I use that term because that, that term means a lot of chaos. And it, bringing back the point that he makes, we have to have a vision and a goal. If you reflect on the last five or 10 years of your life, you've, you've made decisions, you decided uh, to, to make a clear, a clear roadmap for yourself in life, uh, it may be professionally, but in your spiritual life. And, and that's probably why a lot of us are here at Crisio and, and involved in the movement. We, we've heard something, we believe this is where we should be, and we're acting on that. Then we're not wandering aimlessly. You see, we know what the vision, we have a vision, Crisio helps clear the fog from that. And, and, and we're moving in such a way that our goal is to bring more people to Christ as we live our lives in Christ. So we have to have that vision and we have to know our strengths and our weaknesses. I'm going to quote, quote Father here. And, and we need to take stock in ourselves so we know what areas of our Christian life need attention? And going back to the three-legged stool, you can, you can reflect on that. Father reminds us of uh, our spiritual life must be in union with Christ and God. And the skills and resources that we need are, are part of Crisio, but they are prayer and study and the sacraments that the church gives us. And he reiterates that Crisio leaders need to make the movement their primary apostolic life's vision. And the movement is only as good as the leaders. That's why we're here. Um, Cursiestas need, uh, need to be led by a serving and loving community. Jesus' image uh, in the gospel is one who shares in his progression in life of of dying and rising again and, and if we heard paul's name mentioned saint paul you know he tells us that we need to die to self and become anew in life and that's part of our ongoing conversion that progress in our life that father is talking about our vision should be then to, to continually die to ourself and to align our life in a manner that call, God calls us. That is this progressive conversion. It's never finished for us. Uh, it can't be. Um, the church will never be finished until, until God wants it to be. And as we live our life, we have to have that continuum. In other words, our goal here will always be further away from us if we're truly living that conversion. Obviously, the goal is to be saints and to get to heaven and to bring others with us. But as we go through life, that has to be out there. It cannot be finished. The Olympic athlete goes and competes and wins a gold medal. They may come back. That may be it for them. But as Chrysiestas and leaders in Crisio, that goal should never really be quote unquote attainable. It should always be out there and we should always be striving for that. You see, Crisio has the tools to help us through our progressive conversion. Once again, the topic sentence of the chapter. And we need to listen to what God has called us to do. And we have the tools, 
we have the ability to continue to get better and to learn. And the school leaders is one of the steps that we should continually take to improve. De Caloris. Thank <laughs> you.